Hello and welcome to Capital Ideas TV. I'm Mark Bunting. Social media is all the rage within brand marketing circles these days. And why not? The audiences are massive, the demographics are favorable, and the costs are relatively low on social media. For a marketer, what's not to like about this graph from Comscore? This is a breakdown of audience penetration rates each major social media network holds among the 18 to 34 age group in the United States. The figures are from December 2015, so they're a bit dated, but still relevant. Now, Facebook is way out in front with roughly 98% penetration and more than 1,000 average monthly minutes per visitor. Instagram ranks highly on both counts, while Twitter and LinkedIn enjoy high penetration rates as well. And Snapchat does well on minutes per viewer. Naturally, most brands look at those eye-popping numbers and come to one conclusion, and that is that social media is where they need to be. And that's absolutely correct. It's important to have a social presence, but it's not quite that simple. This fascinating chart from IMO Digital paints the picture. The digital marketing consultancy surveyed more than 500 small and medium-sized enterprises on their digital marketing habits. Respondents spent by far the most time, as well as the most money, on social media marketing versus organic search and email marketing. That's here in the middle. Yet the sales they generated from those efforts were less than both of those alternatives. Organic search was by far the most effective tactic. But here's the most surprising stat of all. It comes courtesy of marketing blog Everything Technology Marketing. They've surveyed more than 200 B2B marketers and found that a whopping 45% use no metrics whatsoever to measure the effectiveness of their social media campaigns. And oddly enough, sales results were one of the least used metrics at just 18% or so. It's clear what is needed is a more sophisticated approach to marketing in the digital age. And that's where Engagement Labs comes in. The marketing technology company has run some numbers of its own and found that the optimal approach is a blend of old and new. Engagement Labs and two universities studied the correlations between consumer conversations and sales for more than 170 brands. They found that nearly 20% of purchases could be traced back to word of mouth conversations. On average, it was nearly a dead even split between the impact of online and offline conversations across most business categories. The study suggests many brands may be misallocating millions of marketing dollars on social media when what's really needed is a more two-pronged approach. With this in mind, Engagement Labs developed Total Social. It's a marketing analytics platform that tracks online and offline brand sentiment. Not only that, it recommends marketing strategies and predicts how much sales will improve as a result. Here's Engagement Labs CEO Ed Keller to take us through the science behind Total Social. So Ed, full disclosure right off the top, I'm a shareholder in Engagement Labs. Uh, I bought in at 10 cents quite a while ago. It got down to a four or five. Now we're up around 16, so I'm, uh, I'm fairly happy right now. Good. <laughs> so when you, when you started, you said, we're gonna have tens of contracts. And here we are about 18 months later, you've got about 14, uh, 4.2 million in contracts at last report, several uh, Fortune 500 companies. So are you on pace? Are you where you thought you'd be when you started uh, with uh, the company? Yeah, so I became CEO of Engagement Labs in the, in the fall of 2016. My company, the Keller Fay Group, had been acquired about a year earlier with the idea of building an integrated social uh, data and analytics solution, and that's what we've done. We brought it to the marketplace in the, in the fall of 2016, and I think we're right on pace for where we expect it to be in that, in that time period. You mentioned about four plus million dollars in sales so far. Actually, it's a little bit higher than that. Uh, at this point, uh, we're more like 5.5 million, and I think we're gaining traction with a lot of blue chip Fortune 500 companies that are uh, not only buying, but we've had some good renewals already. So I think we're in a very good place. We've also built a great team. I've just recruited and we've just brought on a new chief uh, revenue officer uh, to help us now build out a sales force and start to take advantage of the momentum that we have in order to ensure that we continue to uh, move into a hyper growth phase over the next year, two, three, and beyond. And these Fortune 500 companies that you're dealing with, Ed, uh, you're right across the spectrum in terms of the, the sectors that they're in. Yeah, one of the things that's really exciting to us about Total Social is we're getting leading companies in a variety of sectors, whether it's in financial services, technology, telecom, retail, beauty. So we think we're not going to be uh, locked into just one or two niches. There's companies across a wide variety of 
of, uh, of categories that, that are finding value in Total Social, and that represents a big commercial opportunity for us to pursue. So Total Social is your, your main offering, and, and could you explain it, especially the, the offline part of it? I know that that is your specialty. You've developed this offline uh, sort of data, data analytics over the years, but, but how do you actually capture an offline conversation between two friends, for example, about a certain product? Yeah, so, so let me just explain first. So Total Social is a, is a data and analytics platform. It's the only data and analytics platform in the social ecosystem that integrates both what's being talked about online through social media and what's being talked about offline. And we built a predictive analytics component that helps our clients not just know what's being talked about in the past, but what impact it's going to have on their business in the future. And we're the only platform in our space that integrates online plus offline with predictive analytics. So that's the, that's the unique offer that we have, and that's why we think we have a huge opportunity in front of us. Uh, the social media comes from scraping the Twitters and, and blogs, forums, uh, and the like, and then we have a proprietary way that we, uh, that we kind of score that data, so we've got some secret sauce there, but our real secret sauce is then around the offline piece, and we're the only people with an offline database, so what gets talked about with brands when people talk over you know, dinner with friends at the, at, the, at the water cooler at work or home with their spouse or with their children. Uh, this is something that, that we've been doing now for 10 years and nobody else, has the, and can, nobody else can create the type of database that we've created. Every week out of the year, uh, we use online surveys to interview a cross section of people and we asked them to tell us about the conversations they had yesterday about products, services, and brands. And what we've learned is that the social media is kind of like the tip of an iceberg. It's what's visible, it's big, it's imposing, but beneath the surface are all these other conversations. And when we've, when we've used our advanced analytics to try to help our clients to understand the impact, what we've learned is that social media and word of mouth each have about an equal impact in terms of future sales, and that impact is, is quite substantial. 20% and sometimes more of the uh, sales impact of, con of uh, a brand's growth comes from these conversations that take place. So if a company does not have the offline piece and all they have is social media, then they are missing out on at least half the opportunity to take advantage of consumer conversation, and maybe they're even misleading themselves because we've also learned that offline conversations bear no correlation to online conversations. There's different reasons that people talk offline than online, and we're the only people who have the entire spectrum. Now, Ed, uh, how would you describe uh, Engagement Labs' overall business model? Uh, what's revenue growth like right now? We saw the, the Q3 number, and when do you expect to be break even? So our revenue model is, first of all, a, a recurring revenue model. We're selling data uh, licenses to our clients, and our goal is to be able to sign people up for three-year uh, recurring revenue types of subscriptions. We're not selling one-offs and we're not just selling services. So we're trying to sell a three-year recurring revenue model which can uh, uh, begin to really multiply quite nicely. Uh, we also uh, see the opportunity and already beginning to experience some upsells once someone's begun working with us. Six months, nine months into an engagement, we see the opportunity to add to that uh, through some upsells. So we're, we're entering a, a hyper-growth phase now and, um, and we think uh, we'll start to be cash flow break-even maybe at the end of 2018, early 2019. We are investing heavily now in sales, and the, the model for SaaS companies like ours is you need to be able to spend the money on salespeople to get those contracts, uh, which then have a, a, a multi-year uh, time period to them. And lastly, Ed, uh, the world is changing very quickly. As you know, technology is changing. The marketing landscape uh, is changing. Where does Engagement Labs fit in there? And, and what does the world look like in terms of marketing in, in just a couple of years time? Yeah, so there's been some projections that have come out recently that say that the, that the social analytics space is about two and a half billion dollars now and growing at about 30 percent a year. So we're excited to be part of a very fast growing sector. We're investing uh, not only in, in the total social platform that we've built out, uh, we're investing in artificial intelligence and in machine learning in order to be able to iterate very quickly around our predictive analytics. So that's an exciting new investment area for us. Our clients, when they work with us, are giving us a lot of confidential data. And so we're also now beginning to explore blockchain as a way to help uh, uh, to ensure the uh, uh, you know, the safety of that from the client's right. uh, point of view. And you're saying all the key words, machine learning, yeah. AI, blockchain. Well, I think they're all, they're all real yeah. in, our, in our particular case. I think these all do fit very well. 
and, um, and we're really excited about it. And I would say that we also now see this kind of the central role that consumer conversation plays in helping to drive business performance. And so we're also now exploring connections with a variety of other data sets that, that coming through our data and analytics platform uh, can create something that's very powerful for our clients.